Do you live in an up and coming area? Is your room too small? I live in a shoebox. Then boy do we have something for you. The Real Fake Outdoors, a product of our foremost metaverse technologies. Sunbathe when it's not sunning, contract injury, and get stared at like a wild animal mating with itself. With your very own Real Fake Outdoors, you can touch twice the amount of grass and make 0% of the social progress. Call now and reserve your very own Real Fake Outdoors and a lifetime subscription to our express organ selling service. Okay, let's just take this a little seriously now. Physical movement and VR are concepts married hand in hand, allowing you to immerse yourself in the virtual world like no other flat screen game ever could. You can smack about enemy NPCs with your head and hands, and if you're feeling extra committed, you can get yourself some leg and hip trackers to give you that healthy boost of full body presence. But the one thing that current VR is lacking in is the ability to walk about and physically locomote to where you want in the virtual world. You want to satisfy that caveman brain itch of running across that wide open field, or do you want to explore your virtual environment as if you were really there? Too bad, full dive VR doesn't exist yet, and neither do full immersion rigs. There is tech out there for you to be able to simulate the sensation of running, jumping, and even swimming in VR, but most of it is either kind of half-assed or prohibitively expensive, and neither of them are as physically unrestricted and uncompromised as just not being strapped into some kind of rig in the first place. So, the only real way to get anywhere near that Sword Art Online slash Ready Player One level of freedom is to escape the traditional boundaries of the indoor VR play space. And out here, away from the physical restrictions of any walls and other domestic furnishings, I'm going to be putting together a fully wireless VR setup so I can have all of this space out here to run around and do what I want. And I'll be making some slime VR trackers to go with it so I can have high quality full body tracking even out here in this terrifyingly unfamiliar environment. This grass stuff's weird. It's like some vegetarian coffee or something. Anyway, I want to get myself a taste of what that holy grail full dive experience could be like. But first, what we're going to want to do is figure out how to go about that in the first place. So, let's go over the plan of action for this little project. The basic idea of this is that I'll be using Virtual Desktop, my Quest 2, and a set of slime VR trackers outdoors for a super open and immersive PC VR experience where I don't really have to worry about the edges of my play space anymore, so I can actually use my body to move instead of the joysticks on the controllers. The first major issue is that my PC is on the literal other side of my house to my garden, and the very weak Wi-Fi connection out here is unusable for wireless VR because of its huge bandwidth requirements. My idea to solve this would be to get a dedicated router, like you usually would for a normal wireless quest setup, but place it outdoors on a really long ethernet cable right next to where I'm playing. And that should mean that my quest will always have a fantastic and nearby connection to my PC all the way outdoors, and most importantly, without having to move it from my desk. <laughs> The reason why I'm using the Quest 2 for this is partly because of the aforementioned ability for it to play PC VR wirelessly over Wi-Fi, but also because of its inside-out method of tracking that doesn't require the setting up of any external base stations, which would just be extremely impractical outdoors, and on such a large scale, probably wouldn't even work. The same reason goes for Slime VR, because that doesn't require any external sensors either. It's a full body tracking method that works entirely based on internal sensors that detect the orientation of your limbs and estimate the pose of your body quite accurately based on that. Now, going for full body tracking on a setup like this does seem a bit excessive, especially considering that only a handful of games even support it in any meaningful way, but the whole point of this experiment is to be as immersive as possible. Kind of like Thrill Seeker's Ready Player One setup, except Poverty Edition. <laughs> I could also in theory use my DIY haptic vest out here too, but that'll be for another time, because we do have quite a few more immediate issues to sort out first. Because the thing is, the Quest 2 isn't really designed to be used outdoors, surprisingly enough, and when the sun is out and blasting the play space with light, it struggles to track properly. Although it may not look at your eye, the sun is orders of magnitude brighter than any room indoors, so the tracking cameras on the headset, only really being set up for those indoor conditions, get completely washed out by the excess of light and can't see anything to track off of. An easy solution to that would be to go out when the sun is down at night. But as many more of you know, the play space being too dark basically does the same thing to the Quest's tracking. Only this time, the lack of light is the thing responsible for the cameras not being able to see anything. Lighting up my garden at night is an option, but I'm not wanting to invest too much into this one-off setup. Plus, it'll be bloody freezing, and I don't want the crackheads of the witching hour to come and steal my shoes. So that would leave us with just the halo hours around sunrise and sunset, where the sun is just low enough in the sky to where the quest can actually track. Now, obviously this isn't ideal at all, because that only restricts us to a few hours of playtime a day at very specific and awkward times. But I have a solution that could allow me to get the headset to track during the day. And 
That's literally by giving it its own set of sunglasses. As stupid as it sounds, sunglasses by design reduce the amount of light going through them to lessen the strain on the eyes of the wearer. So, in theory, I can use that property to actually lower the exposure of the Quest tracking cameras so they don't end up being constantly washed out. That should allow the Quest to work properly in brighter environments like you'd find outdoors on a sunny day. I've toyed around with this idea before and found that plastic sunglasses, cut up and sticky tacked over the cameras, actually did work well, but didn't quite do the trick by themselves. What I've been doing now to block out even more light from getting into the cameras is I've been layering some window tinting vinyl over the sunglasses to even further reduce the exposure. I got a sample sheet of it online for really cheap off of the one of the many window tinting services that offer it, and I just cut it up into tiny little squares, slapped a bit of it on, and that seems to be doing the trick for now. It did require a fair few layers, and at this point the headset wouldn't work indoors with them on, but these new sun shields would only really ever get put on to go outdoors in the first place. Though it really does go to show you the power of the mighty sun. The next thing to solve is getting virtual desktop working outdoors so I can stream PC VR gameplay in this massive play space. For a laugh, I did try using the house's regular router to stream Steam VR out to my garden, and to say the least, the results were unsatisfactory. Oh yeah, that's um holy shit. <laughs> Look at this ping. Which is why, in my original plan, I was always going to use a dedicated router placed much closer to me. That being this Huawei AX3000, which is the cheapest Wi-Fi 6 compatible router I could find, so it should be guaranteed to give at least a half decent experience with the Quest 2. The thing is, I can place this router wherever I can drag a power extension cord to, but I'll also need an Ethernet cable to go along with it. And that's going to have to be quite a long one, considering again, my PC is on the literal other side of my house. I don't have anywhere near that length of an ethernet cable on hand, though I do think I have a solution that I can at least use to test this with for now. I'm going to try and get a couple of my shorter ethernet cables and chain them from end to end with a female to female adapter. Then I'm going to hook that into a LAN port on my main router because it's already halfway across the house, and that should allow me to get this router just close enough to my outdoor play space that I might just get a good enough connection for this to work. <laughs> it is working way better than it was before. This is pretty good. Oh, there's a big spike there. Networking. Ah, it's because I'm not the closest I can be to that router. Um, I think, yeah, moving the router closest is the only thing I can really do to stop those spikes from happening. So, I'm fairly sure I'm just going to end up buying a very, very long Ethernet cable and actually probably sitting the Wi-Fi adapter somewhere out here, right next to the play space. And while I was waiting on that to arrive, it was time to get onto arguably the main star of the show, Slime VR. Like I said earlier, Slime VR is basically the Quest 2 of full body tracking, having all of the tracking hardware on board without the need for any external sensors. How that usually works is you'd have small tracking modules connected to your PC over Wi-Fi on your chest, hips, legs and feet, and each of these modules would be able to measure the angle of each joint it's on, essentially giving you the rough pose of your body. All it does then is just calculate the position of your limbs from your head in SteamVR, and all of a sudden you've got yourself some decent inside out full body tracking which is perfect for my use case outdoors. The only thing is, is you literally can't buy them anywhere. I won't get into the weeds on that one other than saying supply chain shortages are a bitch, but there is one saving grace. SlimeVR is open source and has plenty of resources on how to build my own. I'm sure that was a great idea when it left my stupid mouth all that f***ing time ago, but essentially, the IMUs I ordered for this off of AliExpress just weren't what they said on the team. The MPU9250s I ordered were supposed to have built-in drift correction using onboard magnetometers, but the Shenzhen factory goblins pulled a fast one on me and sent me the magnetometerless version instead because they knew I couldn't do anything about it. So I ended up having to cobble together some weird hybrid setup with some backup IMUs I already had. Those being two ICM2948s I borrowed from my custom high quality PS Move trackers, stay tuned for that, and the rest being much more drift prone MPU6050s, the two ICMs on my chest and hip being there to stop this. Oh. I also had to do some Frankenstein rescue missions on my Wi-Fi controller boards too, because the limited number I had just started dropping off out of nowhere, all for different reasons, and I just about managed to cobble together enough working ones out of the good parts off of the dead ones. Safe to say, my trackers will definitely be getting a set of their own videos at some point, especially since I designed them to be super modular, which I'm very glad I did because of how often I was swapping the parts out. But for now, in their fully working condition, I was finally able to test them out, and with what I'm about to show you, you'll see exactly why I wanted them for this project. My Slime VR setup seems to be doing relatively well. I can go anywhere in my house that I want now, because this is entirely Wi-Fi based, so all I, all I really need to do is just go and have a walk out here into hallway. Have the kitchen for that way, and I can go all the way around, have a bit of a walk. Towards the bathroom, the light in there is not on, so the quest will lose tracking, and in fear of doing so, I can just walk right back into my room, 
And here I am. The Guardian's turned off on the quest, and that lets me just walk wherever the hell I want, all while having full body tracking with Slime VR here. No other full body tracking method I know of could ever be capable of operating in such a versatile manner, which, as I said, is exactly why I chose Slime VR for this setup. So now that that's ready, and my extra long ethernet cable has finally arrived, I can go ahead and properly start setting myself up for my budget Ready Player One VR experience. Yeah, in that, in that, in that, in that big old poggers right there, it's f***ing raining. So basically, I forgot I lived in the UK of and quite inevitably got rained on as I was trying to set things up outside for the first time. What I was basically doing was trying to figure out my own custom Guardian solution to stop myself from running into things because my Guardian is actually too big for the Quest's Guardian to cover it all. And of course, while doing so, the heavens opened up and committed to British tradition. And they must have been feeling extra patriotic because it lasted for two full days, which did wonders for my patience, let me tell you. I pray that Jesus, Mary, that this crap is gonna finally goddamn work out today. Otherwise, I'm gonna commit a fucking crime. Oh my fucking cable's getting tangled up, pulling shit over. God, stay there, Huawei. Stay. Fuck's trying to follow me indoors and spy on me. Oh hi there. I almost stepped on this bee. Oh no. <sighs> Come on. Uh... There we go. God, damn it. You, you, you. You better not fucking drop anything on me either, you dickheads. And thankfully, it didn't. This time, I had all the time I needed to set everything up properly and make sure I was as safe as could be while running around with what is essentially a giant electronic blindfold on my head. So it seems like I still have a little bit of work to do on not being a complete f***ing idiot that runs in a normal f***ing direction that would actually allow me to see the Guardian that I just set up. Slime VR was working great though. As you can clearly tell, for this first go, I hadn't actually had the time to tune Slime VR to my body proportions, so it did look a bit wonky. But this right here is fully base stationless, full quality, full body tracking, literally outside in my garden. And I honestly don't blame myself for getting so engrossed in testing it out, because just walking about physically and having the room to do so, then seeing my avatar follow my movements? Well, some kind of switch flipped in my brain because I immediately abandoned using the joysticks to move without a second thought. No hiccups, no oops, I used it again because I'm used to it. I literally forgot about them completely. Like, I literally had to make an effort to remember how to use it when I needed to adjust my position when I couldn't physically. It has to be one of the strangest experiences I've ever had. Also, when I figured out the stairs in the Great Pug that scale the entire height of the map actually fit within the footprint of my garden, well, I couldn't help myself from just wandering up and down them over and over because I actually could now. It obviously felt a bit weird since I was on flat ground compared to walking up actual stairs, but being able to physically scale the entirety of one of the most recognisable maps in VR chat, and one so familiar to me, that really blew my mind. But anyway, any random weirdo with questionable tracking meandering up and down the stairs is eventually going to attract some attention. How are you walking? I am in my f***ing garden. And thus, the VR chat community heralded me as a god. Touch just... the grass, dude. I'm doing it, bro. It's crazy. What is this shit? And due to my enamoring grace and very peculiar setup, they basically just started ordering me around. I mean, how far can you go? Uh, I'll go to one end of the garden, so they'll reach the whole other side of this. Oh, I'll see how far this actually ends up going. Oh, wow. Quite far, actually. Oh, and that's a bush. Flawless custom guardian, as you know. <laughs> but despite that, I was having fun. Got you. Oh, you know. It's, it's, it's so scary doing that, oh my god. <laughs> and then the attention began to snowball. I began to answer people's questions. I ran an ethernet cable. And immediately forget quite how much space I actually had. And there's a router, like over here. Oh, oh, sorry. I started inadvertently walking all over people completely by accident. Not something I'd usually have to consider in my much smaller bedroom, but it was a new problem that I had that I was slowly starting to fall in love with. The, the freedom, not trampling over some random mutes, I swear. Ah! Naturally, they also wanted to know how much of a fool I was making of myself. Can anyone see you? <laughs> yeah, people are probably staring at me from the windows, but I don't care. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy's Android app, Stormwise most critical laugh. Though, that wasn't enough to dampen the shock of realising the reason that everyone was mobbing me wasn't because of my glowing personality. Are you making a video? It was because I radiate big influencer energy. And that hurt my feelings. Just kidding, I'm soulless. And I was busy getting some bad ideas. Oh, what the? Holy sh a ninja. I wonder how I'd look if I rolled. I was very curious if my scrappy little setup could handle it, and with the amount of eyes on me ever increasing, I kinda had to do it, even though this was only supposed to be a test run. Alright. Oh god fing cry. I leaned down and my headset just started freaking dude, out. Dude, dude, Alright, go. Yo, bash your shit up. Oh shit, my headphones! Oh god, I can't hear anything. 
<laughs> because it was just a test run, nothing was properly secured and everything was falling apart. Your leg is a bit fucked up. I don't mean to alarm you. Oh, yeah, of course it did. Oh, wait a minute. Oh no, <laughs> the whole other piece oh, of my tracker yeah. came off and it was over here. Oh no, everything else, everything's falling apart. Thankfully, my middle names are Todd and Howard. And for these modular trackers, this is a feature, not a bug. So I was able to just put them back together and restart them. Full reset, full reset, full reset, boys. Retake of that last one. So I can roll like this. Ow, oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I clearly wasn't doing my image any favours here, but getting to hang out and mess about with a bunch of strangers like this was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, yeah, she, she's oh, I'm gonna fall over. Shit. Oh god, my Christ. Anyway, aside from outright falling apart, my slimy VR trackers were still having some issues with drift. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Where'd you check that out? No doubt and thanks to the MPU6050s on the legs. But that was the least of my concerns at this point, because as you may have noticed, I'm not using the Quest 2 for this session. And that's because it was out of charge, and the sun shields don't actually work anymore because of a tracking update. Thank you, Meta. For this session, I subbed in the Pico Neo 2 due to its similar capabilities, but although it did work, its tracking was a little strange, to say the least. This headset's tracking reminds me of feeling the drunk. And was in the process of entering some kind of panic state, where for some reason, the play space would literally just fly away from itself. Like, on the base level. The headset itself was, like, actually breaking. Oh no, it's happening. Help me. My headset's starting to so die again. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, this wasn't the first time. Oh, now I'm in the fucking ground. What's going on here? Whoa! So, safe to say, I was not going to continue to use the Pico Neo 2 as my outdoor VR headset. I'll be continuing to test this headset for its own little video, maybe, but as things go for now, I'll just return to the Quest 2 and accept the limitation of only being able to play outside around sunset without the sun shields. But speaking of the experience I just had, despite it being the first test run with all sorts of its own little problems, it was incredible. This was definitely the right step to take to get more immersed in VR. Even though I was still a bit hesitant to get really lively, I could already start to feel the freedom of being able to move around without much thought or restraint. But despite that, all I could really do in VR chat was walk around and show off really. The game really isn't set up specifically for full body experiences, so other than being able to move my legs, there's really not much else I could do with them other than cartwheel around and try to look impressive. And of everything on the planet, I definitely wasn't that. So to get some practice in, and really put my setup to the test, I decided to switch games to Blade and Sorcery, which has much more meaningful full body support. And I'll just say right now, that was literally one of the best choices I have ever made, period. And start the training. I won't say much as this plays out. All right. But once I got started actually using my legs for something in game. Oh my god, yeah, that worked. Nothing could stop me. Get off. What on earth is going on? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Oh, dude, this is actually so cool. In the nuts. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Let's go balling. <laughs> Brain surgery, brain damage, instant death. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at. Oh, Christ. Sweep the legs. Oh, bang. Sheesh. Good night, girl. Bang. <laughs> Sit down there, bud. Part with your weapon, you fucker. Let go. Look at these. Stay, stay, stay. In the nuts. In the nuts. In the nuts. Oh. oh. Everything felt just right. Trail. <laughs> My arms and legs were free to do as they please. It's too fucking many. And now there was nothing in the way to stop. Oh, my foot came out. No, not again. Other than my disintegrating slime VR. Come on, I play with dishes. Oh, oh. <laughs> bang. Oh. No wonder the hip's gone. Look at this. I didn't mean to do this. Oh. Why? Oh. oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh. I don't even know what I did then. I don't think I did anything. Boom! Heat! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Heat! Oh shit! Whoa! <laughs> this right here is that feeling of true freedom I was searching for this entire time. Good bit. More trees! What the? Bushes, connections, setup be damned. This was the best VR experience I could possibly hope for. And all I needed to do for it was touch some grass. You. Boom. Oh, I must look like the biggest idiot. <laughs> it's a big idiot to having fun though, I don't care. So, the verdict on outdoor VR. Genuinely the most fun that I have ever had. Usually when I'm playing VR normally, I always have that one part of me in the back of my mind, holding back my actions just in case I hit or knock something over. 
punching or kicking your stuff by accident is never fun, and the constant anxiety of that has always put at least a little bit of a mental barrier between me and my virtual self. I've always wondered when we'd eventually get to that Ready Player One stage where we don't have to worry about that anymore because we can run, jump, and move about however we want. But the tech for that clearly isn't here just yet. This idea, being the only other way to do it as far as I could tell, has always been floating around in the back of my mind. And my god, am I glad I finally gave it a go. It was slow at first, but the more and more I played, the more and more I felt comfortable being that little bit more lively, being that little bit less wary. As I got used to all this new space I had to freely move around in, the habit of constantly checking around for furniture and standing still just in case slowly started to fade. After a while, I actually started to feel my virtual surroundings almost replace my real ones, almost as if I was slowly leaving the real world behind. Though before Master Zuckerberg could fully absorb my soul, that feeling would always be curbed by some kind of local plant life as I would cluelessly wander into it. Plant, that's a f***ing tree. But I would take that any day to have been able to experience anything like this, at all. Every step I took, every movement I made was as close as possible to one-to-one. -to -one. From where I was, to how I was, I was sucked right into the game. I was already very familiar with the boost of presence you get when your legs are trapped in VR and your virtual body moves as your real one does. But the one thing I severely underestimated was just how much was missing from that equation when you're forced to use the joysticks to travel instead of your own body. In VRChat especially, that was such a bizarre revelation. You often hear that with stuff with slide mills, the virtual world starts to feel so much bigger because you have to physically traverse it. But my experience was a little more mixed. Stuff definitely started to feel much bigger when you physically have to walk to it, but being able to do so now instead of gliding over there with an input made everything feel so much smaller and closer, almost more connected and real now that I had a physical point of reference. And that's the moment I realised I actually just calibrated myself. <laughs> anyway, where it really started to get fun though was Blade and Sorcery. Like I said before, VRChat's games don't really get designed with full body in mind, so other than flexing a bit and increasing your body presence, full body really doesn't do much functionally. And this is where Blade and Sorcery delivered in spades. Fighting enemies and booting them into orbit actually gave me a tangible reason to use my legs properly rather than having to go out of my way to show off. VRChat can be a chill game, but the chill was far out of the window on this one, and I was flying all over the place, completely engrossed in the game. Blade and Sorcery's full body is much less visually refined than VRChat's, but when I was breaking more of a sweat than I usually do playing Beat Saber, you can bet that didn't matter one bit. This is the game that I was running into the most things while playing as well, because I would genuinely get completely absorbed, be chasing down an enemy, and all of a sudden, I'd be at the other end of my play space and halfway across the neighbor's garden hall. It was genuine, primal excitement, and that was the moment I knew I had succeeded in my goal. I had scratched that caveman itch of being able to run across that open field that was right in front of me, and truly feel like I belonged in a place that didn't even exist. The setup was a pain, I could only play when the headset wasn't complaining about the sun, and trying to balance my real movement and joystick movement was always confusing when I had to, but every single moment in between, of which there were many, was like nothing I'd ever experienced before. And it only serves to get me even more excited for the future of VR, where this kind of experience might just be possible. And hey, hopefully I can be just a tiny part of what gets us there that little bit earlier. If you like this video, please leave a like down below, and if you want to see more experiments in custom VR hardware, like my custom haptic vest, get subscribed and check out the other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching. My name's Kai, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.